Hello everyone, welcome back to the Tutoring Pros channel. In this video, we're going to be going over how to factor. This is a really important topic in math because it's something that you use in Algebra 1, Algebra 2, the SAT, and any future math class you end up taking. Please make sure to smash a like on the video, and if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more math content. Here we have the five ways that we can factor a polynomial. The first is to pull out the greatest common factor. So here we have an example, ax plus ay. We can see that both terms have a common factor of a. So if we pull the a out, we'll be left with a times x plus y. The second way to factor is factoring a quadratic. Here we're breaking down a trinomial into two binomials that are multiplying together. Since the first term is x squared, we're going to write x as the first term of each binomial. Then we need to look at the last number and think about factors of 6 that add up to make 5. So if we think of the factors, it should be 3 and 2. And since both are positive, both of these will also be positive. The third way to factor is to factor by grouping. When we factor by grouping, we need to separate the poly uh, polynomial um, in half, like I've shown here. In the first half, you need to think about what do those two terms have in common, and we need to pull out the greatest common factor. The first two terms have an x squared in common, and left over will be x minus 3. The second two terms have a, th a 2 in common, so we're going to write plus 2 and if we factor out a 2 from the second two terms, we're going to get x minus 3. Notice we have x minus 3 and x minus 3. We can pull that x minus 3 out. And then we'll be left over with x squared plus 2. The fourth way to factor is factoring a difference of squares. This is when we have a number squared minus another number squared. Similar to factoring quadratics, we're breaking down this binomial into two separate binomials. And it's going to be the first number plus the second number times the first number minus the second number. And this is when we're starting off with a number squared minus another number squared. The fifth way to factor is the either the difference or sum of cubes. So if you have a cubed plus or minus b cubed, you can go by the following formula to factor it out. It's going to be a plus or minus b. So whatever sign you have, if it's a difference of squares, you'll have a minus sign here. If it's the sum of squares, you'll have a plus sign here. And then times a squared minus or plus, this sign is going to be the opposite. So if it's the sum of cubes, we're going to have the negative sign. If it's the difference of cubes, we're going to have the plus sign, a times b. And the last sign is always going to be positive, plus b squared. Now we're going to start with examples of each of the factoring methods. The first method was pull out the greatest common factor. So here we have two examples that we're going to work on. The first example is 12n to the 5th plus 16n to the 3rd. You need to ask yourself, what do these two terms have in common? First, we need to think about the numbers, 12 and 16. What do 12 and 16 have in common as factors? Well, both of them are divisible by 4. So if we're going to rewrite each of these terms, we can say that 12 is going to be 3 times 4, and then plus 16 is going to be 4 times 4. Now we need to think about the ends. What ends do they have in common, or how many ends? The first term has n to the fifth, and the second term has n to the third. So the first term, n to the fifth, we can think about it as n to the third times n squared. And for the second term, the n to the third, we can just think about it as n to the third. 
So when we see what do each of these terms have in common, they both have a 4 in common, and they both have an n to the third power in common. So that's what we can factor out, 4n to the third. And then for this first term, if we take away the 4 and the n to the third power, we'll be left with 3 times n squared. Plus, if we take away the 4n cubed from the second term, we're just going to be left with 4. And finally, if we factor example 1, we'll end up with 4n to the third power times 3n squared plus 4. Example 2 asks negative 9 times y cubed minus 12 times y. So here we need to think about what do these two terms have in common. We can think about negative 9 as negative 3 times 3. And we can think about y to the third as y times y squared. And then we're going to subtract this from 12y. So we can think about 12y as negative 3 times 4 times y. So whenever we're factoring, we're pulling out the greatest common factor. We need to see what do each term have in common. They both have a negative 3 and they both have a y. And we'll write what's left over. In the first term, we still have 3y squared. 3y squared. And then for the second term, we're going to have positive 4. Because this y canceled out. And finally, for example 2, we're left off with negative 3y times 3y squared plus 4. And the second form of factoring is factoring quadratics. Example 1 asks x squared minus 16x plus 63. So the first thing that we need to think about is the fact that this trinomial is going to become a binomial times a binomial, two binomials multiplying together. The first two terms are going to multiply to make x squared, so that's going to be x and x. The last two terms are going to multiply to make 63. So we need to think about... Um, factors of 63 that add up to make 16. So if we think about factors of 63, there's 3 and 21, there's 7 and 9, and if you add up 7 and 9, that gets you 16. So we're going to write 7 and we're going to write 9. Since the 63 is positive, that means the 7 and the 9 have to have the same sign. Since the 16 is negative, that means that the 7 and the 9 are both negative. So this is how we factor example 1. x squared minus 16x plus 63 ends up being x minus 7 times x minus 9. Example 2 asks 2b squared plus 17b plus 21. Similarly here, we're going to factor it out. It's going to become two binomials. Here we're going to write 2b and b because when we multiply these two terms together, that gives us 2b squared. Similarly to the previous one, we need to think about factors of 21 that add up to make 17. The only difference here is that we're going to be multiplying one of the factors by 2 because instead of x and x or b and b, we have 2b times b. So the factors of 21 are 7 and 3. And if we multiply 7 by 2, that'll give us 14. And 14 plus 3 is going to be the 17 that we're looking for. So we're going to write 7 on the opposite side of the 2b. And then we'll write 3 in the same parentheses as the 2b. Since the 21 and the 17 are both positive, 3 and 7 both need to be positive. And for example, 2, 2b squared plus 17b plus 21 becomes 2b plus 3 times b plus 7. The third form of factoring is factoring by grouping. This method is where we split our polynomial up in half, and then we factor the first side and the second side up respectively, and then we combine it. So 
for this first example, we have 6v to the third minus 16v squared plus 21v minus 56. We're going to draw a line here in the middle to split it up. We need to think about what do these first two terms have? What does 6v to the third minus 16v squared, what do those two terms have in common? They both are divisible by 2 and they both have two v's along with it. If we remove 2v squared from 6v to the third, we'll be left with 3v minus. If we re remove 2v squared from 16v squared, we're going to be left with 8. Now we're going to work on the right side of this polynomial. What do 21v and negative 56 have in common? They both have 7 in common. If we factor out a 7 from 21v, we'll be left with 3v minus 56 divided by 7 is going to be 8. Notice what's inside of the parentheses is exactly the same. This is where we're trying to get to. If for some reason what's inside of the parentheses is not the same, then you did something wrong and you need to check your work. The last step for example 1 is to factor out 3v minus 8 and we'll be left with 3v minus 8 times 2v squared plus 7. Example 2 asks 25x cubed plus 5x squared plus 30x plus 6. We're going to draw a line there in the middle to split our polynomial up into two halves. Now we need to ask ourselves, what do the first two terms have in common? What does 25x to the third plus 5x squared have in common? They both have a 5 in common, and they both have two x's in common. If we factor out a 5 and an x squared from the first term, we're going to be left with 5x. And if we remove 5x squared from the second term, we're going to be left with 1. For the second half, we need to think about what does 30x and 6 both have in common. They both have a 6 in common. If we factor out a 6 from 30x, we'll be left with 5x. And if we remove 6 from 6, we're going to be left with just 1. When I say remove, what we're really doing is where we're dividing. So we're dividing 6 by 6 and this is how we factor out. So finally the last step is to factor out a 5x plus 1 from this polynomial and we'll be left with 5x plus 1 times 5x squared plus 6. The fourth form of factoring is factoring by difference of squares. In example 1, we have x squared minus 49. So the format of a difference of squares is a squared minus b squared equals a minus b times a plus b. And it's pretty much a shortcut to factoring out these types of polynomials. So if we look here, we have x squared and we have 49. So if we were to make a comparison between a squared being x squared and b squared being 49 we can see that a equals x and b equals 7 so here we'll end up with x minus 7 times x plus 7 example 1 is pretty straightforward for example 2 we have 9a squared minus 4 so obviously this a squared is going to be 9a squared and then the b squared is going to be 4. If we took the square roots of both sides we'll get that a equals the square root of 9 is going to be 3 and the square root of a squared is also a. So 3a and then b would be 2. So here we'll have 9a squared minus 4 become 3a minus 2 times 3a plus 2. The fifth and final form of factoring is the difference or sum of cubes. The formula for a difference or sum of cubes 
is a cubed plus or minus b cubed is going to be a plus or minus b. Whatever sign you have, whether it's difference or sum, is going to be the same in that first sign times a squared. The second sign is going to be the opposite sign. If originally in the question you have a plus, then you're going to use minus for the second sign, for the second sign, and then vice versa. The middle term is going to be a b, and then that last sign is always going to be plus b squared. For example, one we have x cubed minus 125. So we need to make a correlation between x cubed and a cubed. So a cubed equals x cubed. And then b cubed equals 125. So for a cubed, it's pretty obvious that a squared would be x squared. And a would be x. For b, b if b cubed is 125, b will be 5 and b squared would be 25. So if we're breaking down x cubed minus 125 into the equation above, it's going to be x minus 5 times x squared plus the opposite sign plus 5x plus 25 and then this is how you factor example 1 x cubed minus 125 for example 2 we have 27 times u to the third plus 64 a cubed is going to be 27 times u cubed and then b cubed is going to be 64 we'll start with b cubed since it's a little bit easier if b cubed is 64, b is going to be 4. And if b is 4, then b squared will be 16. If a cubed is 27 a to the third, uh, u to the third, then a will be 3u. And a squared will be 9u squared. So if we plug in all of these values, we're going to have a plus b which will be 3u plus 4 times u 9u squared minus a times b which will be 12u plus b squared which is 16 and that is the end of our video if you haven't already, please make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It helps push my videos out to more people who need help with math. Make sure that you send this video to a friend. Subscribe to the channel. Why not? It's a subscribe. It helps us out. And we really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video.